Summary of the Poem Pied Beauty by Gerard Manley Hopkins Gerard Manley Hopkins' poem Pied Beauty is a hymn of praise to God for the beauty of the natural world, particularly focusing on the dappled or multicolored and varied things in creation. The poet highlights the uniqueness and diversity of nature, celebrating things that might be overlooked or considered imperfect by conventional standards. The word pied refers to something marked with patches of different colors, and Hopkins uses this as a metaphor for the variety and complexity in the world. In the opening line, the speaker glorifies God for creating dappled things, those objects and creatures in nature that display contrasts and variations. He lists examples of these, that skies of couple color as a brined cow compares the skies changing colors to the markings on a cow, while rose moles all in stipple upon trout that swim refers to the spots on the skin of a trout. These images suggest beauty in randomness and variation. Similarly, Hopkins appreciates the way chestnut falls look like glowing coals when they drop to the ground, the colors in the wings of a finch, and how landscapes are divided into different uses like fold, fallow, and plow. These are all examples of how natural elements are pieced together in diverse and contrasting ways, yet they create something harmonious and beautiful. Hopkins then moves beyond nature to include human labor and the objects that support it. All trades, their gear and tackle and trim suggests the poet's appreciation for the tools and instruments used by people in their daily work. This line extends the celebration of diversity to the human world, showing that both nature and human activity are interconnected in their variety. In the second part of the poem, Hopkins reflects on the significance of these counter, original, spare, strange things. The phrase emphasizes how the poet sees value in things that are not uniform or predictable. He marvels at the mystery of how these seemingly opposite qualities, such as swift, slow, or sweet, sour, coexist in the world, and he attributes this to God, whose beauty is past change. While everything in nature may change and be subject to cycles of birth and decay, God's beauty remains constant and unchangeable. The poem concludes with an exhortation to praise him, reinforcing the idea that God is the ultimate source of the world's beauty and variety. In terms of rhythm and meter, Pied Beauty is written in a form known as Kirtle Sonnet, a shortened version of a traditional sonnet. Hopkins adapts the Petrarchan sonnet by reducing the octave to six lines and the sestet to four and a half lines. The poem uses sprung rhythm, a technique that Hopkins invented to imitate natural speech patterns. In sprung rhythm, stressed syllables are not always evenly spaced by unstressed syllables, which creates a lively and unpredictable rhythm, mirroring the theme of variety and irregularity in the poem. The meter is based on stressed syllables, with each line containing a varying number of stresses. This irregular rhythm complements the poem's focus on the non-uniform, diverse aspects of the world. Structurally, the poem consists of two stanzas, the first one giving specific examples of dappled things and the second reflecting on the significance of these things. The division of the poem into two parts mirrors the contrast between the varied, changeable beauty of the world and the eternal, unchanging beauty of God. The enjambment in many lines enhances the flow and fluidity of the poem, contributing to its lively and dynamic feel. Thematically, Pied Beauty celebrates the richness of diversity in the natural world and suggests that beauty can be found in things that are irregular or imperfect. Hopkins highlights the idea that the world's variety is a reflection of God's creativity, and that even things that seem contradictory or strange are part of a divine order. At the heart of the poem is a deep religious faith, as Hopkins sees God as the source of all beauty, whether in nature or human activity. The poem invites readers to see the world through the poet's eyes, as a place filled with wonder, beauty, and divine purpose. Line-by-line -line explanation of the poem, Pied Beauty by Gerard Manley Hopkins. Glory be to God for dappled things. The poem opens with an expression of praise to God. Hopkins begins by thanking God for dappled things, which refers to objects or creatures that are spotted, multicolored, or irregular in appearance. This line sets the tone for the entire poem, introducing the theme of appreciating the variety in nature. Hopkins celebrates the beauty in things that are not uniform or perfect, 
suggesting that their diversity reflects divine creativity. For skies of couple color as a brined cow. Hopkins compares the sky to a brined or streaked cow, focusing on the way the sky changes colors, especially at dawn and dusk. The couple color refers to the blending of shades, much like the patchy markings of a cow. The contrast between different colors in the sky is an example of how beauty can be found in contrasts and variations, which is central to the poem's theme. For rosemoles all in stipple upon trout that swim. Here, Hopkins describes the rosemoles, the reddish spots seen on the skin of a swimming trout. The word stipple refers to a technique of creating patterns using small dots, as an artist would do. Hopkins is fascinated by the intricate details in nature, finding beauty even in the smallest and most delicate features. This line emphasizes the poet's attention to natural patterns and variations, reinforcing the theme of diversity in God's creation. Fresh Fire Coal Chestnut Falls, Finch's Wings The phrase Fresh Fire Coal Chestnut Falls refers to chestnuts that, when they fall from trees, look like glowing embers of coal. Hopkins uses vivid imagery to bring attention to the natural transformations that occur in the world, capturing the warmth and brilliance of chestnuts as they fall. Similarly, the finch's wings are highlighted for their varied and colorful feathers, continuing the theme of celebrating diversity in nature. Hopkins' use of detailed, specific images showcases his appreciation for the beauty found in contrasts. Landscape plotted in pieced, fold, fallow, and plow. In this line, Hopkins moves from the natural world to the human-shaped landscape. He describes the land as being divided into sections for different uses, fold for grazing animals, fallow for uncultivated land, and plow for farming. This patchwork landscape is another example of how the world is a collection of diverse and varied elements, each with its purpose. The line reflects Hopkins' admiration for the harmonious order created by the combination of natural and human-made divisions. And all trades, their gear and tackle and trim. Hopkins extends his praise to human work and the tools people use in their trades. Gear and tackle and trim refers to the equipment, instruments, and accessories used in different professions. The poet sees beauty not only in nature but also in human activity and craftsmanship. This line broadens the scope of the poem, suggesting that all aspects of the world, both natural and man-made, reflect the diversity and creativity of God. All things counter, original, spare, strange. Hopkins lists several qualities that describe the things he is praising, counter, contrasting, original, unique or one-of-a-kind, spare, simple or minimal, and strange, unusual. This list encapsulates the idea that beauty can be found in things that are different or unexpected. Hopkins encourages the reader to see value in the things that might not conform to conventional ideas of beauty, reinforcing the poem's theme of celebrating diversity and irregularity. Whatever is fickle, freckled, who knows how. Fickle refers to things that change or are unpredictable, while freckled suggests spots or uneven patterns. Hopkins marvels at the mysterious ways in which these qualities come into being, reflecting his awe at the complexity and unpredictability of nature. The parenthetical who knows how expresses a sense of wonder, acknowledging that the processes behind these variations are beyond human understanding. With swift, slow, sweet, sour, a dazzle, dim. This line presents a series of contrasting qualities, things that are swift versus slow, sweet versus sour, and a dazzle, dazzlingly bright versus dim. These opposites highlight the diversity in nature, showing how different qualities coexist and balance each other. Hopkins' use of these contrasts reinforces the idea that the world's beauty lies in its variety, with opposing forces contributing to its richness. He fathers forth whose beauty is past change. In this line, Hopkins attributes all the beauty and variety in the world to God, who fathers forth or creates these things. The phrase whose beauty is past change emphasizes that while everything in the natural world is subject to change and variation, God's beauty remains constant and unchanging. This line underscores the religious theme of the poem, where the diversity of the world is seen as a reflection of God's eternal and perfect nature. Praise Him The poem concludes with a simple but powerful call to worship, praise Him. 
This final line encapsulates the poet's message, urging readers to give thanks to God for the beauty and variety of the world. Hopkins ends on a note of reverence, reinforcing the idea that all the diverse and dappled things in nature are worthy of praise because they are the creations of God. About the Poet Gerard Manley Hopkins was born on July 28, 1844, in Stratford, Essex, England. He was a Victorian-era poet and Jesuit priest, known for his innovative use of language and rhythm, which set him apart from his contemporaries. Hopkins is most famous for his development of sprung rhythm, a poetic technique that mimics natural speech patterns. This distinctive style is evident in many of his poems, including Pied Beauty and The Windhover, where he explores themes of nature, faith, and individuality. Although his poetry was largely unpublished during his lifetime, Hopkins' work gained recognition posthumously, thanks to his friend and fellow poet, Robert Bridges. His poems often reflect his deep religious faith and love for the natural world, blending vivid imagery with spiritual reflection. Today, Gerard Manley Hopkins is celebrated as one of the most original and influential poets of the 19th century, renowned for his expressive language and unique poetic form. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.